Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. So we're continuing with the front page review with Punch. Amatu, you have a story? Yes, I have the story of Zenit Bank doubles profit to one trillion. Mm. I said Zenit Bank's profit uh, before tax ballooned by 99% from 505 billion to one trillion at the end of the third quarter of 2020. In between all the controversy yeah, said, around. He uh, said uh, profit after tax grew by 91% from 434.2 billion to 827 billion. And they also said that the growth in the top line was driven by the expansion of both interest income and non-interest income. They said the interest income rose to about 1.95 billion, while the non-interest income grew to about 856 billion. And it was driven by substantial growth in fees and commissions that they were charging people. And then they said that with that, with this, the financial performance was achieved amid a challenging operating environment in the country. Despite all that has been going on, they were still able to make this huge profit. Mm. All right. Well done, Zenith Bank. Mm. You have, I have an, Yes, I have a um, human and good story here, a sad one. Residents of Aribisala streets in Igor, the area of Lagos State, they were thrown into confusion yesterday when a woman identified as Fatima allegedly bit off the tongue of her mm. neighbor. Mm. Hey. Miss Tura. How can you buy Please, where did you see all these stories? Yes, and um, <laughs> Miss Tura, unfortunately, <laughs> what happened was that they were doing laundry together in the compound, and Fatima, 30 years old, accused 18 years old Miss Tura of using her bucket without her permission. Yeah. Wow. And arguments started, and fights started, and she started strangling Miss Tura, that is 18 years old, and an orphan who just came to mm. stay in that compound with her friends because she's at the you know low place now, no parents and all that. And she started strangling her. So in the process of her um, um, mistura not being able to breathe, breathe. she brought out her tongue, you know, trying while choking. And Fatima now Yay! to beat off her tongue. See, when we say we it off. Nigerians, a lot of Nigerians need therapy. Like, we need psychological well, like, evaluation. They were going to the three hospitals that they, they denied her oh, access, God. yes, till they finally found another, yes, bucket, actually. Bucket. Bucket. So they've yeah. arrested yeah. Fatima, and, you know, the case is, has been reported to the Hi. police. This one that it's terrible. Off As in, now. she can, she won't be. Able to it, she can't even process it. Beat it off. 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 Her mouth. The level of the bite. Mm -hmm. ah. 18 years old. Yeah. 30 years old. That is supposed to be mature yeah. mentally. Yeah. And so, um, apparently, yeah. another set of um, Nigerians are going to be facing a bit of hardship. They say 12 MDAs actually will be facing delays in payment of their salaries. They won't be able to pay salaries till December. They said mm. the delay is attributed to exhaustion of the budget for personnel cost by agencies, which has been based on the new approval of minimum wage. So they, there's a budget allowance for the year, and because there's, in between that budget that they had prepared for for the year allocation, there's now new minimum wage. They had to implement new minimum wage, which has exhausted the allocation of budget for personnel cost for the year. And I'm th I think maybe they were expecting there'll be a complementary budget or something, but they said, People won't be able getting their salaries, their, their salaries until December. That's their October salaries will not come until December. And we must be conscious of the fact that there are many, many agencies are facing, many people are facing difficulty in, more ex in, in the expenses with their lifestyle. Mm. But they said the 40% increase is what has caused this. And the circular has been issued by the Director of Finance and Director General Jack Ode on October 22nd saying there will be salary delay officially, saying that the month of October's payments will be made by December. And they're apologizing for the delay that will happen. And this is affecting 12 MDAs. It did not provide the names of the 12 yeah. MDAs. But imagine, what do you expect them to, how do you expect them to eat and continue to function? Will there still be work in those agencies in November mm -hmm. as December. well as December yeah. while they are waiting? And this is end of the year where plenty of people usually have expenses. Moving on to Daily Sun. We've missed you, Daily Sun. Mm -hmm. It's like the first time we're seeing Sun this week. Um, major headline, EFCC explains trial of four ex-governors, three former ministers, list achievements. People have been questioning. So get the Daily Sun and read the achievements of EFCC. Don't ask if they've done well or not. In other news, over 1.3 million affected by flood, 321 lives lost in 34 states. That's from the federal government. And it says Southeast and South South are the worst hit. Governments, um, presidency to governors, Proposed tax reform bill is not against the North. And another news, concentrate on your manifestos. Ganduje advises a do state governor elect. Zenit Bank, we've taken the story already. Iwanyang Titan's last outing. Um, it's talking about the life 
times of late Owanese Indigo president, his accomplishment, mission, testimonies of kins kinsmen. And another, the final story, um, governor's back sale, payment of crude oil in Naira. So we're expecting that should kick off. What story yeah, are we taking so in? So the National Economic Council yesterday described Nigeria's recent floodings as a national disaster and called for intensified efforts uh, across the affected states. So the Anambra state governor, uh, Charles Soludo, was the one who briefed the House correspondent at the end of the meeting, presided over by the vice president, Kashim Shatima. And he said, according to the council's reports, the floods have impacted 34 states and 217 local governments and displaced over 740,000 people. Additionally, he said 321 lives have been lost so far, 2,854 people injured, and substantial damage has been inflicted on homes and farmlands. So he highlighted the gravity of the situation and said the council urged um, the state-level emergency agencies to strengthen their coordination with the National Emergency Management Agency, that's NEMA. And uh, he said state emergency management agencies must also up their game to be able to manage the crisis effectively. He says, and I quote, you know the country is facing national emergency with regard to flooding. And the report so far identify a major national disaster. We've been called upon to note that to date about 34 states have been affected, the same numbers that are drilled out mm -hmm. initially. And um, everybody just needs to work together to see how they can support, especially the people who are living in these areas where they have the flooding and find ways to, you know, um, you know um, put up more programs that would help them, either to ease them into other the highlands during the time of the flooding and bring them back when it's over, or just find a way to just help them. Well, I thought it, so what took the story on helicopter crashing? Let's move on to, I wanted to add to that story about the fact that um, there's the, the dams. I think you met you, it was in the story as well, the fact that yeah. they need more dams because yeah. it's really, really, the erosion, Cutting out communities completely due to flooding, it's really bad. Moving on to Vanguard, major headline, there's hunger in the land. Governors admit back Tinubu. Um, federal government turns, we've discussed that story over, I think we've taken the story over and over again. I'll find the story I haven't taken and read out the highlights. We have not yet received any payment for petrol from um, Hitman, that's from Dangote. That's Dangote is saying that we have not received any payment for petrol from Hitman. Um, and then... Um, what story have we not taken? Allocation. Rivers NLC threatened to withdraw services if blackout. Tinubu not discriminating against the North, and it details what really happened there. And I'm, I think it's really important we always read the stories and not just the headlines, because sometimes the headlines can be misleading. What story will we take here that we haven't yeah, taken so, before? Yeah, um, so there's the story of the hunger in the land. So oh, yeah. it's just now that the governors are realizing that Nigerians are now, hungry. That's not what they said, though. <laughs> so they had a meeting, and they said the governor said they were aware Nigerians are hungry, but that, um, but that the um, help is on the way, saying that... Um, the chief executive of the NNPCL2 was in the meeting. He came and he said that um, now there's total fuel subsidy removal. There's no subsidy anymore. Mm. And then he said that um, the only challenge that they are having is they plan to alleviate the people's sufferings caused by the frequent increase in the petrol pump price. That that's the only thing that they need to do now, make sure that it's stable. Then um, the, um, the governor, Uzodima, of Imo states said that it is the prayer of the governors that as soon as possible relief should come the way of the people. He also said that they also, while they were in the meeting, they received a presentation from the African Medical Center of Excellence, funded by the African Bank, a world-class hospital. He said their hospital has the latest and modern equipment and to be managed by first-class medical experts mm. in fields of um, areas of treatment of oncology, cardiovascular cardiovascular issues, hematological care, and other comprehensive general medical research. So all these will go on just to help Nigerians at least ease of the suffering. Do we still have time? Yeah. yeah. All the ways uh, that what story are you taking? Dangote. Okay. Mm -hmm. Saying uh, that, that. Um, <laughs> he has not received any payment from the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, that's Ipman, to purchase refined products. He says that he has been waiting for that uh, payment. They've been having discussions, though, but nobody has come forward to pay and is appealing to them they should come and load directly from here. He has the capacity to supply everybody. He says we can load 2,900 trucks per day and we have also been evacuating petroleum by sea. So capacity is there, product is there. Make Onakon carry on our products directly from Dangote Refinery. That's what he's complaining about. And, but they also yeah, said that they must get approval of NNPCL. 
Why is their MPCL involved, involved in is direct marketing? The, I don't get it. Why are they involved? This, not the more you look, the less you see on top of this. You can't call the price. Are you an, are you a marketer? <laughs> we'll go to the report and go and we'll go and let's find out. Oh price. my goodness, that's what we can take on front page review for today. Joining, we'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll um, continue with the show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.